I've been watching Paul George uh, this season, and um, I'm thoroughly impressed with his consistently uh, high level of play. Um, it's not really up and down. It's like a steady flow of excellence. In fact, he's gotten better as the season has progressed. Okay, and it's, and then you wonder why, along with him and uh, along with Russell Westbrook uh, having taken the back seat now and being a sidekick, so to speak, um, you wonder why the Thunder are now 36 and 19 on the year. 17 games above 500. And uh, they're on pace to go 52 and 30. Which, when you consider the step up in competition throughout the NBA, and also the fact that although they do have Schroeder on the roster and some a few other complementary pieces, the, the roster is, consi- is considerably thin. They still haven't. Uh, gotten back Andre uh, Roberson from injury from last year. And uh, I think they're down now to like 11 players in the rotation. And sometimes that, you know, that hurts the Thunder, that they're somewhat thin when it comes to manpower. Yet, when you watch what Paul George especially has been able to do this season, um, turn around his reputation, the reputation that he had with the Pacers. While he was a great player with the Pacers, oftentimes he was looked at as a guy that didn't step up in the clutch. I remember remember when he had like that stretch where, what was it? He was 0 for 14 uh, in game winning situations or something, or the quote unquote in the clutch. Uh, well, he's turned the rotation around this season. And um, another thing I like about Paul George, and he said something about this, he alluded to this last night uh, in an interview, is that he's old school in his mentality when it pertains to uh, matchups or marquee matchups. You know, everybody nowadays, everybody want to be friends. Everybody want to be buddies and shit. It's the LeBron James generation. All right, not to knock LeBron James, but that's what I just think about when I think about the generation of friends and people want to, you know, pile up together and 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 become teammates and you know and all this type of shit. He pretty much said he had an old school mentality where he liked he relished matchups and uh, a couple of weeks ago. He outplayed Giannis Antetokounmpo, and um, the Thunder got a big victory against the Milwaukee Bucks. And last night, in a matchup against the Houston Rockets, he accomplished a rare feat of actually outscoring James Harden, uh, 45 to 42. At halftime, it looked like James Harden was headed toward another 50-point game. And at one point, the Thunder trailed the Houston Rockets by 26 points. Uh, I think the Rockets had like 42 points in the first quarter. And it wasn't necessarily that the Thunder were playing terrible. Um, Their shots just weren't falling. And uh, you kind of, I kind of had the impression that Many of the Thunder player, you know, the role players were kind of panicking a little bit and not playing within themselves. And uh, I thought this is one of, I thought from watching the game, there's going to be one of those games where the Thunder lose by like 15 points. You know, James Harden might score 50, Paul George might put up 25, but it's going to be an inefficient 25 or something like that. And I thought Russell Westbrook will have one of those games where uh, he turns the ball over a lot, which he did. Uh, But I got to say, a lot of those turnovers weren't really his fault. Um, 
some of them were passes to teammates where they just couldn't quite handle it and it went out of bounds or something like that or, you know, just certain passes that he tries to sometimes get in there to teammates and maybe sometimes he forces some passes. I don't know. But it was some of it was passes to teammates that the teammates weren't able to hang on to and it, you know, and the Rockets were able to intercept it or something like that. But some of his turnovers, you know, they aren't terrible turnovers. It's not like the type of turnovers where, you know, he he, he has the ball, he's dribbling, and it goes off his foot, and, you know, a Rockets player gets it or whatever. You know, it's not like terrible turnovers. But anyway, I'm not, not talking about Russell Westbrook. Paul George for a second. Okay, Paul George for this video. It's more than just the numbers, 28.3 points per game, uh, about eight rebounds. Well, last night he was 12 or 22 from the floor, 6 or 14 from three-point range, I think 11 rebounds and three assists. Uh, but the 28.3 points per game, um, see where that ranks for this season. Of course, James Harden is way above everybody. Um, I want to say, let me see, see where he ranks right now. James Harden is number one, then there's Anthony Davis, Stephen Curry, and then Paul George. So Paul George is fourth in the NBA in scoring. i tell you something, man, you can really tell how the rule changes have really changed as far as how scoring is. I remember <clears throat> when I was growing up in the, not growing up, but like when I was in high school, y'all, and uh, during the defensive dominated, you know, the, the half-court defensive oriented NBA of the late 90s, the, the guys who were like at the, the 20, like 19 and 20, like right here is 12. DeMar DeRozan, 21.6. C.J. McCollum, 21.4. The, back then, the guys who were like 19th and 20th was like 18 point something. You know, it was only like a couple of guys averaging over 25 points per game. Then the rest of the guys were averaging 23, 22, 21. You know, so like I said, scoring is way up, man. Um, to have a guy averaging almost 37 points per game, not named Kobe Bryant or Michael Jordan is ridiculous. All right. Um, but anyway, it's more than just the numbers with, with him. He leads the NBA in steals. For a long time, it was his teammate, Russell Westbrook, but now Paul George has overtaken him. He's, um, I mean, you can make a great argument that he is the MVP, but I don't think they're going to give it to him. I don't think they're going to give it to Paul George because people are enamored with scoring. People like a story. Um, and I guess some people logically think, well, if they gave it to James Harden for what he did last year, look what he's doing this year, then he really should be the MVP. Um, but I think the reason why it's probably going to go to a guy like maybe Giannis and Paul and uh, Charles Barkley said something about this in the video. Historically, the MVP has always been on a team that has won at least uh, 50 games. Generally speaking, the MVP has been on a team who has either the best record in the NBA or one of the best records in the NBA. And, Milwaukee, even though they lost last night, still have the best record in the NBA. And I think personally that Giannis Antetokounmpo is probably the leading candidate for MVP. Um, but I think a case should be made for Paul George. All right. No, he's not averaging 36, 37 points per game. Uh, but he's more efficient. 
than James Harden. He's a better defensive player than James Harden. And to me, his level of play in the last month or so, or even the last two months, is not talked about enough. I mean, he's averaging 28 points, eight rebounds, four assists, but I have to I mean I have to think that in the last couple of months he's averaging over 30 points per game or close to it. Let me see something. Uh, let me see. I'm just going to go Yeah, in the last in the last month, man, well, since the New Year's, Paul George is averaging nearly thirty two points per game, seven and a half rebounds, three point eight assists, two point five steals, shooting close to forty six percent from the floor, forty four percent from beyond the arc. And I mean I, I he, he's shooting the ball so well. Um, I saw like I, I saw like an advanced statistic where from 25 to 29 feet out, he's shooting 38 percent from beyond the arc. That's crazy. That's close to like Steph Curry numbers. You know, not to say he's as great a shooter as Steph Curry, but that's an underrated facet of his game. And um, if you're a Laker fan, man, you have to wonder, damn, you know, what would what would the Lakers be like if they did get a guy like Paul George, you know? But I think that uh, if he was playing with LeBron James, Paul George wouldn't be as effective because he would have had to change his game so much because LeBron James – needs guys who don't dominate the basketball. He needs guys who are spot-up shooters to be effective. And um, as far as team success is concerned, and um, but playing with Russell Westbrook, Paul George is thriving. And uh, I hate the fact that the media doesn't credit Westbrook enough for the way that he has dialed it back offensively and they over criticize him about everything and i'm gonna you know do a video talking about russell Westbrook uh, right after this one but um salute to paul george man i think he's a leading mvp candidate but i don't think they're gonna give it to him um but tell me what you guys think